Something happened to me. Once, I drove all the way from New Hampshire to Florida. I had to stay overnight at a motel when I was about halfway there. It was a somewhat rundown motel located on a quiet road off the highway with only two cars in the parking lot, indicating there weren't many guests. The lady at the front desk seemed very robotic and her boredom with the job perfectly matched the atmosphere of the motel. The lobby was filled with tacky chairs and tables that you might expect to find discarded on the curb. The wallpapers were outdated and equally tacky, but it didn't matter to me since I wasn't there for luxury, just for the night and convenience. It was already late when I checked in, so when I entered the room, I simply took out my toothbrush, brushed my teeth, and jumped into the motel bed. I turned off the lamp next to the bed, attempting to sleep and not looking forward to the long day of driving ahead. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. I checked the bedside clock to make sure it was almost midnight. I went to the door and looked through the peephole. Apparently, the peephole was malfunctioning because I couldn't see the hallway through it, just darkness. I looked down at the crack under the door but didn't see any outlines of feet blocking the light. So, I cautiously opened the door a bit to peek into the hallway. I didn't see anyone standing in front of the door, so I opened it fully and checked both sides of the hallway. It was clear, making me wonder if someone in this relatively vacant motel was playing a prank on me. I shut the door, locked it with the bolt this time, and went to lay back down in bed. Then it happened again, a knock on the door. This time, I jumped out of bed, ran to the door, and checked the peephole again. Shockingly, all I saw was the empty hallway outside. But this time, I could actually see through the peephole. I unbolted the door, opened it, and found no one. I looked down both sides of the hallway again, and there was no one. This was where I drew the line, grabbed the key to the room, and went to the lady at the front desk. I told her someone kept knocking on my door and politely asked her to check the cameras to see who it could be. She said they didn't have cameras in the hallways, and her reaction wasn't what I was hoping for. She seemed calm and unconcerned with what I told her. She said in a calm voice, there is only one other guest in the whole building, then just stared blankly at me. I wasn't sure how she thought her response properly acknowledged my concern or what she expected me to say, but I could tell she wouldn't be of any help with the matter. So, I left her and went back to my room. I locked the door with the bolt again, put on my headphones, and played one of those 10-hour sleep relaxation videos on YouTube. This would not only help me get to sleep, but block out any possible future sounds from whoever was deciding to mess with me. And it worked for a while, at least. Eventually, I flipped from my side to my back and looked around the room. My head froze when I was staring at the corner. I sat up to get a closer look at what I thought I was seeing. It looked like a giant humanoid figure, about 10 feet tall, standing right in the corner, head to the ceiling. When I put that image together in my head, I felt a sudden rush of horror in my body. I jumped across the bed to flick on the lamp, but when the room lit up, there was nothing in that corner. I simply sat there with my heart beating probably 200 beats per minute. I gave myself a couple of minutes to calm down before shutting the light back off and laying back down on my side. I still had the headphones in my ears, playing the relaxation video. It helped calm me down a little bit. I didn't last even two minutes without sitting back up and examining the room again. However, there it was in the corner, a ten-foot-tall humanoid figure. I crawled to the edge of the bed to get as close a look as I could before practically freaking out. I saw what I was sure was a long arm at the side moving. I dove to turn on the lamp again, and the corner was empty again. I didn't stick around that time. I packed up my few things in a matter of seconds and left the room. I gave the key to the woman and said, I'm checking out early. She didn't even say a word as I stormed out of the front door of the motel. I continued driving until I found another motel where I fell fast asleep with no supernatural disturbances. As a kid, I had a bedroom on the first floor. Money was a little tight and our mom was taking care of four kids. I was the youngest, so I had the little room. My room was next to the living room, a small square room with wood flooring. There were two big vents in the floor in this room, two opposite corners, and also two vents in the ceiling. My bed took up half the room, as I said, it was a very small room. I'll keep it short and straight to the point. 
As a kid, I had a first floor bedroom. Money was a little tight at the time and our mom was taking care of four kids. I was the youngest, so I had a small room. My room is next to the living room and is a small square room with a wooden floor. This room has two large floor vents in opposite corners of the room, as well as two vents in the ceiling. M wide bed took up half the room and like I said, the room was really small. I was 13 years old, doing my homework on my bed since I didn't have a desk in my room when I heard a child's laughter. I went outside my room to look around the living room and kitchen for any of my siblings. Everyone seemed to be upstairs, though. Usually, in these kinds of stories, you hear people say they just chalk these kinds of things up to their imagination, but that's stupid, I definitely heard that laughter. There's no way I imagined something so clear. I continued my homework, but with one ear perked up, listening for any other suspicious sounds. Eventually, enough time passed that I was able to move past it. In fact, it seemed it was just about when I was able to get over it that I heard it again, a child's laughter, or more so giggling, I should say. This time, it went on longer. It wasn't coming from outside my room, it was somewhere in the room. I figured one of my brothers might be hiding behind me. I walked weirdly towards the laughter, then looked down at the floor vents. The sound was coming from inside the vents. I kneeled down, pressed my ear to the vent, and the giggling stopped. After a few seconds of silence, I lifted my ear from the vent and looked at it. I took a moment to realize I was staring into a pair of eyes. I screamed like a little girl and called for my mom. She rushed into my room a few minutes later. Of course, the sound in the eyes were gone. Due to a lack of sleep, my mom thought I was going crazy, but I refused to sleep in that room. So, she let me sleep in her room that night. This went on for about a week before she put a stop to it. I lived in the same bedroom for the four years leading up to our move, and nothing supernatural happened again after that. I hope these things never happen again. That day was a day of profound change for me. It was not only a confrontation with the fear of the unknown, but also a peculiar encounter between humanity and the supernatural. I moved away from that place filled with eerie memories, far from the old hotel and a room resonating with childish laughter. However, no matter where I went, those experiences followed me, leaving indelible imprints in my thoughts. As the years passed, I learned to bury these experiences deep within, attempting to avoid revisiting those memories. However, human curiosity about the unknown and the mysterious occasionally led me to reconsider that past. Until one day, I stumbled upon an old bookstore and discovered a book full of mysterious legends. The book recounted various supernatural events, including stories similar to my experiences. I was intrigued and immersed myself in these enigmatic tales. During my reading, I noticed some surprising commonalities. Entities considered supernatural ghosts were sometimes depicted as complex and ancient souls, enduring endless suffering and seeking redemption or justice. I began to question whether this was mere coincidence or if there was a deeper connection. Was there a force beyond our understanding of reality that linked these seemingly isolated experiences? This question sparked deeper contemplation. I decided to investigate these legends further, seeking answers. My journey took me to various mysterious locations, searching for clues that were believed to be bridges between humans and the supernatural. In this process, I encountered a variety of people, experienced adventurers and scholars dedicated to the study of the mysterious. Their stories were filled with unknown adventures, drawing me deeper into the exploration. In an ancient abandoned laboratory, I sensed an intangible energy, as if time had stood still. In a deserted mansion, I established a connection with the ghost of a female doctor, whose presence echoed my past experiences. These encounters made me believe that perhaps there were forces in the world that could not be explained rationally. These forces might be connected to human history, tragedies, and sins in intricate ways. As I delved deeper into the investigation, I became a storyteller, documenting these mysterious tales and passing them on to future generations. I began to realize that these stories were not simple fantasies, but true witnesses to the deepest fears and desires of the human psyche. At the end of this journey, I met an elder, a witness who had experienced human atrocities. He told me that the supernatural was not just about eerie phenomena, but a presence beyond life and death, recording human stories and witnessing the struggle between good and evil. 
in our conversation, I found the answers I sought. These supernatural experiences were not isolated events, but the ties binding human civilization. They were witnesses to past tragedies and guides toward justice and redemption in the future. I became a guardian of these stories, carrying the voices of tormented souls. My mission was no longer just to record these stories, but to find the forces seeking redemption in the supernatural, helping them find resolution and justice. This journey changed my life, making me understand that the supernatural was not just a part of horror stories, but an eternal mystery in the human psyche. My goal was no longer merely to escape these incredible experiences, but to stand at the pinnacle of the supernatural, exploring its truths and mysteries.